Welcome to Grace Church on this Palm Sunday. I'm Sue Ann Ward, and I'm going to begin today by sharing with you a passage from the 11th chapter of Mark's Gospel. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. And tie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and they found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, and they threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who were following shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. And then Jesus entered Jerusalem, and he went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of Christ. Aloof. Sometimes when people first meet me, they get the impression that I am aloof, standoffish, not very friendly. And I am always mystified by this because I know myself to want to make connections with people. I care deeply about others and I would do just about anything to help people out. Inside, my heart is soft and empathetic. But what I have learned about myself over time is that I am very introverted, ridiculously shy, and a bit socially awkward. I am a lot of things, but aloof and unfriendly, I am not. I'll bet that you've been misjudged at times, too. People can have preconceived notions or make quick assumptions about us based on appearances or first impressions. That this happened to Jesus is evident in our Holy Week scripture passages. Today, Palm Sunday, we begin Holy Week, the week of the Christian year when we turn our attention to the last days of Jesus' earthly life. Our Gospel readings recount many events and interactions, but let's focus on two pairs of two, two processions, and two crowds. Today's Gospel passage recounts Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Just, just imagine the scene. As Jesus rode through the gates and down the laneways, people gathered around his route and they spread their cloaks and leafy branches on the road in front of him. They treated him like a conquering hero who they thought would take up arms against their Roman oppressors and free them from their subjugation. Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem was the first procession, and that was the first crowd. That crowd was adoring people shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The evangelist Luke adds, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. They revered who they thought Jesus was. Of course, if the people in that crowd were paying attention, they might have noticed the signs of Jesus' true self. I mean, he rode in on a donkey, 
not a war horse, but they saw who and what they wanted to see. Contrast this with the crowd whose voices we will hear on Good Friday, a crowd gathered before Pontius Pilate, who could have called for Jesus to be freed, but who instead cried, crucify him. It is difficult to know who that crowd thought Jesus was, but it is clear that they did not know him for his true self. And so they demanded the governor condemn Jesus to death by crucifixion, a sentence that would result in the second procession, a long and painful journey of a whipped man wearing a crown of thorns and carrying a cross from the governor's headquarters to Golgotha, the place of a skull where he was crucified. Jesus entered the city a king and left it a criminal. The crowds went from Hosanna in the highest to crucify him. Two processions, two crowds, two false notions of who Jesus was. So who was Jesus? Well, in the reading from the letter to the Philippians, appointed for today, we read that though Christ Jesus was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In this passage, St. Paul tells us that Christ is God, who loves us so much that he was willing to be born into the world as a human, Jesus. As Jesus, he was humble and willing to do whatever was necessary, even suffering and dying on a cross for us, to show us the nature of God. In Jesus, we do not see a wrathful God who must be appeased with sacrifices. We see a God who is loving, humble, compassionate, and forgiving. A God of restorative justice, not retribution. As Franciscan friar Richard Rohr says, Christ did not come to change the mind of God about humanity. It did not need changing. Christ came to change the mind of humanity about God. We humans often seem to mistake God for a deity who is aloof, when in Jesus we can so clearly see a warm and caring God who desires to be in relationship with us. God's identity is important. Jesus seemed to want his followers to at least begin to grasp God's nature. In our scriptures, Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And of course, various answers were provided, Elijah and Moses and other prophets. And then he asked, and who do you say that I am? To which Peter replied, seeming to hit the nail on the head, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. To those words of insight, Jesus proclaimed, Blessed are you, son of Jonah. And we are blessed when we draw close enough to God that we begin to truly comprehend God's nature. What a difference it makes in our lives when we grow in relationship with the God of love, who encourages and nurtures us and fills our lives with hope and meaning. Our God is always seeking to grow in relationship with us. God knows us and loves us and in a million different ways is revealing God's self 
to us. This Holy Week, I encourage all of us to seek to know God better by making time to be with God in prayer. Let us open our hearts to spending more time in scripture reading, in meditation, and in nature, allowing God to speak. Just like in any relationship, if we want to truly know someone, we have to set aside time, eliminate distractions, stop talking, and listen. And listening to God is prayer. May you deepen your relationship with our God who loves you so much that she would do anything for you. And may you know yourself to be blessed. Thanks be to God. Amen.